encourage them even if they don't poop in school at least make sure that when they're at home yeah. after taking breakfast after taking supper they take 10 15 minutes in the toilet they literally sit mm. on it with their pants removed down they're seated uh, imitating the act of wanting to poop even if they don't poop at that particular moment it is okay yeah. but you keep doing that repeatedly then you're now uh, tuning their brain to have that reflex that after eating I will poop okay. and with time it comes Welcome to my channel. Thank you so much for tuning here once again. So today it's a very interesting video. When I was a new mom, I spent so much time on Google searching why is my baby, why do babies, why is my baby, why is my baby having hiccups? So many questions we ran to Google. And I asked my Instagram followers, um, what are some of those questions you've, you've stayed on Google searching why is my baby, dash, dash, dash. And then I got a wonderful guest here to answer some of the questions that are frequently Googled. Her name is Dr. Petrine. She is my bestie, but uh, for the purpose of this video, she is a pediatrician and I'm so excited to have her here. Like this chick, you need to book an appointment, like to see her, even me as a friend. Yeah, I'm free on this and this day at this and this time. Wow. <laughs> yeah, That's so finally, wow. under a lot of pressure, she, has, she is here. <laughs> we almost canceled, but wow. Thank you for honoring this call <laughs> amidst protests. <laughs> I'm not aware of any protests. <laughs> wow, wow, wow. Welcome, uh, Petrine. Thank you so much thank for you. the introduction. Would you love to introduce yourself? Okay, fine. Uh, so my name is Petrino Mondi. I'm a doctor by profession <laughs> and specifically a lover of babies. So that makes me a pediatrician and I'm happy to be here. Oh, wow. She's a pediatrician. <laughs> you know that I'm so proud of you. I have to tell people she's a pediatrician. They will look up and say, oh, an engineer. <laughs> she's a pediatrician. I knew her before she was, when she was nothing, just studying biology. Oh, okay. okay. <laughs> okay. okay so I'll she's a that. pediatrician. <laughs> <laughs> let's jump right into why do babies dot, dot, dot. Okay. Let's, okay. Let's so why do babies hiccup a lot? Um, so, first of all, hiccuping is a normal reflex in every human being. Mm. And for babies, it will happen because, you know, their body is still getting used to the environment. They are even, even in terms of the feeds they are taking, the milk and all that, in terms of volumes, as their body is adapting to that, then that can happen. So you find um, babies generally have higher energy requirements than uh, adults and as a as a result of that you'll find that their intake is a bit more not only just uh, maybe in amount but also in terms of frequency so that means that they are able to get more full quickly and that that in itself can bring about the hiccups because you see they have uh, a small stomach which can easily uh, get full with X amount of milk and now because of that uh, they would need to be able to do the hiccuping so apart from having a full stomach that can be one thing some other thing that can also bring about lots of hiccup is also gas mm. yeah gas can bring about hiccup yeah uh, because basically it's your muscle you know the diaphragm the muscle being excited by like we can say are uh, the nerves and why are they being excited it can be because again it's, you're full, full. Or you have gas. Uh, sometimes when it is persistent, which would say maybe more than two continuous days, then you'd need to be a bit worried. Is there an infection going on? Like that is something that would warrant medical attention at that point. I didn't know about gas. Wow. And then why do babies poop a lot? <laughs> <laughs> and while on this, please tell us the different poop colors of okay. what it means. Uh, so pooping a lot, again, if you compare how the newborns, the younger babies eat versus how we eat, I mean, those, they feed like after every two, three hours. Mm. 
For us, we don't do that. So yeah. it's almost, I'd say, almost, um, uh, it could relate with the frequency of eating. You eat, you get full, you need to make space for the next meal. Okay. So that is what, that, that's the rationale I would use behind sense. that. It makes sense, because yeah. they, they need to eat more. Yes. Okay. So you eat, Exit. you're full, <laughs> you need to make space for the next yeah. meal. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> that so it's in out in out in out yeah, so. um though the frequency um as long as the frequency and the consistency that's actually what's important the, the consistency yeah for every baby they establish their normal but what you'd be worried about is like runny stool okay. your baby is having frequent running stools like more than three three episodes of runny stools in a day then that is something that again you'd need to seek medical attention because now that's what we start calling diarrhea yeah so that's something else and then again if the poop is too hard you can imagine trying to expel something that is so hard from even us we suffer as adults when you yeah. have this constipation now you can imagine what a baby is going through and they cannot speak so they will cry yeah yeah so that's also something that we need to be our uh, cognizant about and when you talk about the poop colors, so there are various poop colors, and um, I'm sure most of the mothers can attest, uh, when the babies were born, the first poop that was passed green. was a very dark green, some would almost say even black, yeah. but it's very dark green, that is what we call meconium. Which oh, yeah. is yeah, which is very important for a baby to pass, especially within the first twenty four hours of birth. Okay. That is a good thing for us. When that doesn't happen, then we would need to investigate further because there are different thought processes that come about from that. Mm. So that type of color for the baby, the first few days of life is okay. Um, there is also yellow, um, there is green, uh, then there is brown, especially now you see once they start now taking solid foods and you find that the color of poop changes, changes and becomes even more f smellier and all that. So those ones, those are okay. The colors that you should be worried about is number one, black. You know, like charcoal black, that's a, that's a color that you worry about. Then the other color that you can worry about is uh, white, like uh, the wall behind us. Mm. That is the color that you should be worried about. Also creamish, creamish in color, that is the color that you should be worried about. And red, when you see red stool, that means that there's some blood in it. So that's also something that you should be worried about. Those four colors, I'll repeat again. Black, gray, uh, cream, white. white, or there are five, and red. red. Those are the dangerous ones. The other colors that you see, they're more or less okay. Mm. Yes. Depending on what the baby's taking. Yes. Yeah. Because yeah. I remember formula gives you like greenish. That can Breast happen. Breastfeeding is more like yellowish. yellowish. Yeah. 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 So I, I learned, you remember my baby shower, they were saying, when you come home from work, look at the poop you found so that you know what your baby was given. <laughs> Interesting. Ah, yeah. Another one. Constipation. How long is too long? So how long is too long? Wow, that's a very good question because yeah. um, for everyone, they have different thresholds thresholds they have different patterns mm. because you'll find like for you maybe your normal is you won't poop every day you'll maybe okay. poop after every two three days yeah. so what mat oh, some of the things that will tell you about constipation is the consistency of the poop how hard is it mm. because when you talk about hard stool um, I frequently would ask some of my clients, like the babies, have you ever seen a goat? Fine. Do you know what the color of the poop, uh, sorry, do you know how, they... how it looks like? You've seen the small round balls. Yeah. So when someone is removing poop like that, that shows they are constipated. Yeah. When you're going to the toilet and you're using a lot oh, of course. force yeah. and it's coming out as thin as a finger, just like that, yeah. thin as a finger, you're also constipated. Wow. Then there are those people who, um, because they've been constipated for such a long time, uh, the best way I would use, uh, let me try and use this analogy. So you have poop in a tube. Mm. If it is very hard, it will not move by. It will not move out. Then you're still eating every day. So there's the fresh food that comes in, and this one has blocked the passage out here. Yeah. So the new food you've eaten will kind of liquefy on the sides of the tube oh. and try and find a way to pass through. Yeah. So some people will actually come, Dr. I, um, um, my child is having loose stool, oh. but you find the child is not sick, nothing, it's not diarrhea, kumbe, 
the child is constipated. Mm -hmm. So it is the newly, the newly fresh yes. poop that yes. is coming out loose, but the hard poop is stuck within yeah. the body. Yeah. And now that one would have to be removed uh, medically. That's when now sometimes they would need uh, medical intervention okay. for some of these things. Mm -hmm. And then again, um, when, it t when we come to talking about constipation, then there are also some, uh, diet has a very big role to play in it. And um, then again, in children, as they're developing, when, especially the time when they start being toilet trained, um, they can also develop constipation because mm -hmm. at that point, you're now trying to teach them, you need to use this thing so that you can poop into it. Mm. But for them, it's like, yeah, <laughs> I try to do. Uh, like, what are you doing? I'm not ready. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So your child will tell you when they're ready to be toilet yeah, trained. Because yeah. if you force them, it yeah. becomes an unpleasant experience for them. And then what do they do? They now Hold start it. holding it. Yeah. And with their telltale signs, because like you can imagine if, as you as an adult, if you're really pressed, there's a long queue to the toilet, you start dancing, yeah. you know? Even children do that. And then those who are very constipated also in schools, you find that some, some children have actually complained that the, in the school environment, either the teacher does not allow them to go to the toilet when they want to go, yeah. or the toilets are too dirty, dirty, or some children are making fun of them when they are in the toilet, yeah. you know? So they'll choose not, to, not go. to go. They will hold on until they get home. And so your body becomes used to that, that I don't poop in school, I don't poop in school. So even slowly that urge it comes but you, you hold it you hold it and then that that keeps happening yeah. so with time you find that maybe if you observe your child you find that um on their undergarments sometimes they have soiled with bits of poop and you know the first reaction will be like why did you poop on yourself yeah. what is happening you don't know where the toilet is yeah. but when you do that you're actually admonishing this child mm. so you need to try and find out what happened in school mm. so that you're now able to help him or her. And then again, now encourage them, even if they don't poop in school, at least make sure that when they're at home, yeah. after taking breakfast, after taking supper, they take 10, 15 minutes in the toilet, they literally sit mm. on it with their pants removed down, they're seated, uh, imitating the act of wanting to poop. Even if they don't poop at that particular moment, it is okay. Mm. But you keep doing that repeatedly, then you're now uh, tuning their brain to have that reflex that after eating, I will poop. Okay. And with time, it comes. Okay. So that's it's very, very important. It is. There are even actually some children who will present with constipation when things are not okay in the home. Yeah. Like when parents are fighting, when Ooh. the child is being abused, maybe sexually, psychologically, when they're undergoing some form Trauma. of stress, yeah. they're those who will actually withhold the poop. So constipation is just not, you know, you're not, you're not just eating vegetables properly. No, there's a lot more that goes into it. So it's something to be looked into. Looked into. Next question. Why do babies spit up a lot? So spitting up. Okay, so spitting up does happen with babies. Again, um, newborn? It's especially in the newborn period, it okay. is normal, yeah? yeah. Um, so now it's what we would need to now start uh, looking into is the amount. Is it a lot? Mm. Is it after every feed? Mm. Do they spit up literally everything? Or can I say vomit everything that they have taken such that they're hungry again? Mm. Those all point to different things medically okay. speaking even uh, regurgitation, because there's a whole spectrum from spitting out, regurgitating, whereby they, uh, whatever they have taken in comes up, mm. you know, and like, then... Is that what we call reflux? Yeah, that, that, oh. that would be the reflux. Oh. And then there's now the overt vomiting, which just comes out with more force, more amounts. The, 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 you know. the, the, the yeah, exactly. Oh, those are medical interventions. Yes, medical. no, 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 sorry. No, no, those are not medical interventions but now those are different i'd say different can i say um different ways to help us know this spitting oh, out yeah. is it just kidogo is it a lot is oh, it forceful okay. yeah so that we know what's going on okay. so with younger babies mm. it is normal okay because even um their um, 
their, what do you call it, their tummy muscles are learning how to strengthen themselves oh. properly. They are, basically, their muscles are all learning, even uh, in terms of the mouth coordination of keeping wow. everything inside. You know, at some point, there's rule or something, something will come out, but because they're still learning how to control their muscles, okay. yeah? But now when it's becoming too much in terms of you've given this baby food right now and they've everything you've given, it's like it, whatever yes. came in, everything yeah. has come out. Don't sit with that baby at home. Please look for your doctor, look for a pediatrician so that this baby is assessed because some of these things actually do contribute to a uh, low, low weight gain, all these malnutrition subsets. Mm. Yeah, so it's very important that this is something that would have to be looked into. Okay. Yeah. Nice. Why do babies get nasal congestion? Okay, so nasal congestion. Um, the most typical uh, reason I found for this actually, you know, they have come from this nice, warm place, warm environment whereby there are no toxic smells, there are yeah. no, you know, it's just, it's my space. Yeah. Then all of a sudden, Allah? You're in China. <laughs> I wouldn't say China, but there is this smell from here, there is that, there is that, there is what. Yeah. It's very, it can be very confusing, yeah. Yeah. you know, and now this is a baby who's, taken their first few breaths and now they are getting used to the new climate around. Mm -hmm. They're getting used to the bed sheets, their mom's smell, dad's cologne, brother's sweat, all these things. So this can sometimes cause the body to have that, um, a lot of mucus production in, in the sense that it's now trying to and trap that. any foreign substances oh. from going further deeper. So that's what the mucus happen, uh, oh. comes out. So that now with the, with the clearance, you know, at least you're able to clear what has been trapped. And now there have been various methods that have been used to remove these mucus. I know you use the sucker. There's like that bulb sucker that you there's can the use. There's the aspirator. And there's there. the nose free that you... There's that one. Yeah. B back during the... Back nowadays when we were much younger, I once saw my mom just... Una <laughs> nyonyo. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. I know. I like, tried huh? it and I was like, what the hell am I doing? <laughs> I remember asking my mom and she's like, when it's your baby, you will do whatever it You know, it also takes. traditionally, like the way us we use sunlight drops, mm -hmm. there's something called afita. Afita. In blue. Okay. I have it. I'll show you. Oh, so like when, like when you had a cold, mm -hmm. you only administer it under the sun. Like 10 o'clock sun. And then you put it. My grandma makes them. Then you put kidogate powder mm -hmm. here. Ten, five minutes won't be over. I sneezed everything. Wow. Works so fast. Okay. So I, fast. I, I, Ask I, I, your mom. She will know Afita. <laughs> I'd, I'd like you know to Afita, see what that is about. If you know Afita, tell us <laughs> in the comment section. <laughs> okay. Why do babies um, have the cradle cup? Um, so cradle cup. Hmm. Very interesting story. Cradle cup. But that's for another time. Mm. Um, <laughs> uh -huh. So, um, why babies get it? So, um, it is postulated. For those who don't know cradle cap, I'll just put an image of Yeah, I think that that would be good. Yeah. yeah. And it's also very important to be able to differentiate between cradle cap and eczema because they can look alike. Make sure you send me the photo of cradle cap. <laughs> cradle cap and yeah. eczema. Okay. Yeah, okay. because even for us as doctors, it's important for us to be able to distinguish because they have different distributions on the body as to how they occur and their managements are a different. bit different. Okay. Though at some point they kind of overlap in the terms of their management. Comes, yeah? So yeah, the cradle cap tends to come on the scalp mm. sometimes can also come until the, yeah, the yeah. until the margin like the eyebrow margin yeah mm. and um when that happens um so now what medically it's postulated it's it's been postulated to be uh, caused by a fungal infection mm. um in my stomach as no. the mother no no, no just outside no. the world yeah. the, yeah, they're already getting this that is hard. <laughs> Stay in the belly. <laughs> yeah. So, um, yeah, that's how it is. That's what is postulated to cause it. And um, when it happens, so now you find that um, maybe it's all over there. It looks like crusty yeah. lesions. And uh, there, there are different methods of managing it. There is the conservative management, which means not using medication, like, you know, keep just medication is chill kidogo. And then now there's the medical management, which can also be instituted, and this has been done 
uh, more so when it's a bit troublesome because sometimes this it goes away on its own yeah. and uh, I don't know if you've had experience with it and how yeah. how you dealt yeah, with it. My son had phenol cap here but like for a month I was like what is what's happening here mm -hmm. it looked it looks fungal by the way it looks like a shilingi but it's all over okay so anytime like we combed you'd see flicks mm. so of course i went to youtube academy and then i saw <laughs> like when i'm washing the baby i should like use a very light brush i was using and i just brushed that area mm -hmm. gently gently every day in the week even sometimes you just be chilling i oil it first yeah. and then i mm -hmm. i brush it off and in a week it was over and literally what she's spoken about that's the one of the conservative ways yeah. to manage it okay. now when it becomes more persistent it's really not ending then that's when you really need to go see your doctor so that the appropriate medications are prescribed for that okay. yeah. noted noted um mm -hmm. why do babies roll their eyes <laughs> when they born with an uh, attitude of rage huh. <laughs> a good question even i would like to know why they roll their <laughs> eyes on it because even us as adults we roll our eyes yeah we started young yeah <laughs> we, we, we do roll our eyes <laughs> so <laughs> even her she wants to find out like, yeah you know, like, maybe well, i, I yeah. probably need to check on it and yeah. <laughs> get back to you on that one okay okay then um why do babies um sweat when being breastfed or sweat a lot Okay, so I think I'll start with the sweating a lot. So when generally every human being sweats, mm. but uh, when we look at babies, they have a larger body surface area uh, ratio than we as adults. So that means that, you know, they, they have a small body and a lot, they have a lot of, their energy expenditure is more. Okay. okay? Mm -hmm. So now that means that they would use more energy, so mm. to speak for doing even little activities, and that's why they would sweat, okay? Because uh, the sweat is a, is a product of energy uh, utilization in the body. So that can happen. You'll find uh, they're playing, they will sweat, all these little, little activities, mm. simply because of their, their body size and all that, mm. and the energy requirements. That, that, that's one explanation. Now, uh, breastfeeding, sorry, sweating during breastfeeding is, something i'd want to know a bit more about in terms of does your baby look tired generally does your baby breastfeed like two minutes and then i'm a choker i'm a and i sweat sana sorry uh you had it's okay oh, okay understand. We'll put some titles. <laughs> okay <laughs> so has your baby just stopped breastfeeding after like two minutes and is like no gasping for air before continuing again and then uh, sweating. sweating. Oh. So when that is happening, then that would be a point of concern, mm. especially if it's a lot of sweating during breastfeeding and the baby is using a lot of, you can see this baby is using a lot of effort, then that is, that is something that you should alert your doctor about mm. because it can be a pointer that there is, there is probably something going on with the baby. And one of the things that keeps us on high alert for this is uh, heart problems, yeah? So some, sometimes it's not just sweating during breastfeeding, but we need to go a bit deeper and find out, is it every time, does, how much energy does your baby seem to be using when breastfeeding? So those are very important little questions that now guide us on, yo, is this normal? Is this mm. not normal? Should we do mm -hmm. something more about it? Yeah. yeah. So to, at some point it's not normal. So. To, if, if it's every time and then your baby is not gaining weight, mm. your baby breastfeeds for like two minutes, takes a break, tired. they're tired, then they have, then that is, some, we need to rule out heart diseases, the thyroid gland diseases. Those are, those are important things that we would need to sit and look into. Okay. Yeah. How, why do babies peel off their skin? <sighs> you guys and your questions are very interesting. <laughs> 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 really, we're just curious why why are they peeling? But it's it, it's good to be curious. Yeah. It's very important to be curious. I support that. Even I am curious. Yeah. yeah. So um, why they peel their skin? Mm. Okay. So this is the theory that we have come across, uh, and I I kind of buy it. So. Um, and I think we'd need to define this peeling because you know if it's too general, like at what stage in when life they're born, are we talking when about? When they're born. When, when they're, they're born. born. Yeah. Okay. Like shortly they're just peeling. 
<laughs> okay. So, again, um, there's the environment they were used to in the uterus. Then now they've come outside and now they're adapting to it, you know. Mm. So we're introducing uh, new substances on their skin, new fragrances, new, different new stuff. What? And if, all those things. And then now you find that sometimes the shedding of the skin is a normal process. Because even for us as adults, uh, we have like top layers of our skin which die off after some certain days and then kind of new layer it grows. It's, it's, it's normal. It's it does nice happen. Say, hey? Yeah, it's just now when the peeling of the skin is in thick layers, there's blood coming out, like it's just there's pus coming out. Those, those, are, those are danger signs to watch out of. Yeah. Because okay. even for us, like when we go there, we are doing what? Exfoliation. We are literally removing the dead skin. We are peeling it off. Okay. Yeah. So tied to that, why do they have acne at some point in the early stage? Um, so number one, we would need to be very careful what we call acne. <laughs> what we call rash. What I call acne <laughs> is not what you call acne. Because... Uh, <laughs> I'll get various questions. My baby has rashes. My baby has acne. But once we put our eye to it, we're able to tell you, oh, by the way, this is not uh, acne. Mm. This is something else. This is something else. But most rashes that occur within the um, newborn period, majority of them tend to resolve on their own without you having to interfere mm -hmm. on them. Yeah, mm -hmm. Because, again, maybe they've just been bo born and then, you know, the... On the body, we have something called sebaceous glands, mm -hmm. which, um, yeah, uh, the sebum is the type of oil that helps the skin look like nicely oiled and stuff like that. So sometimes when they are blocked, then they can look like they have this acne, these other things like milia. Um, I don't know if you've had such terms, but yeah, that, that, <laughs> <laughs> that can that happen. Uh -huh. Yeah, so um, it can, again, it can happen. Uh, what what would need to be uh, cognizant about would be the danger signs. Like if they're looking red and angry, they look like they have pus inside. The baby is having fever. Baby is irritable. Then that one, take to the doctor. Yeah, but the yeah. other one, it will just resolve. Most of them, most of them, we just observe. See, um, they'll resolve on their own. Sometimes when we try to do uh, this cosmetic stuff, kind of even. <laughs> It aggravates it, it. Yeah. 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 That thing scared me, by the way. But I don't want visitors. <laughs> well, for you, how did you deal with it? You told me to just leave it. Uh -huh. And did it disappear? <laughs> yeah, like after a week. Okay. It was just clear. Yeah. yeah. So, majority of them that follow follow that sequence. Yeah, honestly. but it's disturbing for a mom. It really it's so is. Disturbing. It really is. Because yeah. in medicine, sometimes the treatment that most people would not want is time and patience yeah we don't have that even i sometimes i do not have the time and patience to wait, to wait for something like you're just like you know no, no, but yeah. a good majority of the of things yeah time and patience heals mm. nice one that's mm. a quote why do babies eat all the time uh again their body requirements mm. <laughs> and the energy expenditure mm. that's why they will eat as much and they need all the nutrients that they can get because they are they are actively growing, growing the from, first year from yeah from the first years especially the first year of life the amount of height weight yeah. the length Lengthen. everything it's it's like in big proportions then it slows down from like the age of three four mm. then again comes to wow. peak at puberty mm. when you see those adolescents coming home <laughs> and they have raided the fridge, uh, just understand, because their body is changing, again. Is changing. now they are on the growth spot again. Uh, yeah. So basically they are growing. Yeah, so okay. it's all about the energy expenditure and uh, yeah. requirements, okay. yeah. Why do babies smile in their sleep or laugh? <laughs> <laughs> I, they do it so I've heard that they think about butterflies, they're having sweet <laughs> dreams. <laughs> We don't know. We're just having a good time. I, 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 I like the explanation that they are having a good time. <laughs> they are dreaming of butterflies and, you know, nice things. <laughs> I, I like that explanation. Scientifically, though, honestly, that one, I'd need to check. 
But the one that one explanation I received about the thing about butterfly for me I was very content. <laughs> I was okay. <laughs> okay, next. Why do babies get gas? And mm-hmm. I want to combine this with why do babies get colic? Okay, so that's a very interesting question. Yeah. Um, at this point, I think it's very important for us to understand what is colic uh, and what we're uh, describing as gas. Okay. Yeah, because uh, there are people, there are some who who've used it synonymously to mean one and the same thing, mm. but actually they're not. Mm. So when we say colic, we are looking at it as the excessive crying mm. that is common in. Uh, babies who are less than three months of age, whereby they are crying for more than three hours in a day, and more than three times in a more than three times in a week. So literally, that's one of the definitions that we scientifically use to describe as colic. Literally, the persistent crying. Yeah. And when it comes to what causes it, um, there are very different theories that have been proposed for it. Um, some not completely conclusive. Um, like some of them being uh, things like um, the baby is uncomfortable in terms of the feeding, like they're either underfed or overfed. <laughs> you know, and, and now they're just they're just crying. You yeah. know, they can't communicate, so yeah, they're just crying. They you know, yeah. so that can happen. Um, so when you're talking about like feeding difficulties, that can be a cause of colic. Um, some babies don't tolerate cow milk well. That can also be a cause of colic. And then um, sometimes even when um, when now now we talk about the gas, yeah. That's um, also one of the reasons for yes, colic. Yes, like I'm um, with that gas and all. I just yeah. want to cry like. That's their way of expressing themselves. I am uncomfortable. Yeah. And also another theory that has been proposed is, you know, in, within the body we have what we call the normal good bacteria mm-hmm. that is there to help us regulate our systems. So when you change that bacteria and now the bad bacteria come in and colonize the parts of the body like the stomach, then that in itself can also cause colic. Oh, how do you change that bacteria? Um, so, oh, but like uh, giving antibiotics, like if there's co- uh, con- constant use of antibiotics, you know, antibiotics will not only kill the bad bacteria, but will also wipe the, away the yeah, good ones. Yeah. And now, because of that, you can now have a reversal whereby now the bad, now the some of uh, the bad bacteria, or whatever it is, can overgrow. Ooh. Yeah, and mm. now that in itself they will produce gas, mm. which now makes the baby uncomfortable. Even for us as uh, adults, it can happen. Mm. And that can also bring about the colic. So would you also say, like, what when mommy takes gaseous things, mm-hmm. like food that has gas, mm-hmm. it goes to the baby? So that's, I used to strongly believe in that. Um, so there are studies that show that can happen. Others are still not very, um, uh, can I say... Uh, conclusive Conclusive. on it yeah Yeah, because whatever it is that you eat um it will be digested and then transferred transferred as nutrients to the baby Mm. yeah so sometimes some babies will actually um react to that like let's say i think perfect example you can take probably is cow milk you know Mm -hmm. Uh, because in uh, in the milk now there are those different uh, substances Mm. and now because maybe they the mom reacts to it or how the baby will react to it can cause the gas in terms of now maybe your baby is now cow milk intolerant because mom took tea or took hot chocolate yeah (laughs) like i used to do (laughs) and then now the baby uh, develops the colic pole pole you find the has the rashes so sometimes that's one of the rationales we used to tell moms that if we see like maybe a baby has eczema or even sometimes even the colic actually yeah. you'll find that maybe mom is being told uh slow down on your jahe on on <laughs> <laughs> or whatever it is that you're eating that you think can, jahe when yeah. jahe, we, by then we didn't sleep that night i took jahe i was like never again never <laughs> why do babies remove their tongue in and out Whoa. is there a reason Actually, there yes. is. <laughs> Actually, there is. There is. Yeah. Honestly, I, I think I strongly believe that nothing happens without a reason. Mm, yeah. So, why this baby removes their tongue out frequently? So, it's a type of a reflex in which it helps them uh, find food. Mm. So, they're able, it helps them uh, 
breastfeed nicely or even just you know looking for the boob yeah yeah and um by around the age of like four to six months it's it's expected to disappear mm. once now they also now That's true. uh able to coordinate more of their body movements and everything yeah so, so basically they are communicating it's, yeah, it's, they're almost it's, crying for hunger. Like. It's their method of could you say dear, you know, not after you. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I didn't even know it's a thing. Why do babies get bowed legs? Uh, so bowed legs. Um, in this context, it would be very important to describe how old is this baby. Mm. But generally, uh, when they are born, um, You'll actually not be, uh, you won't be able to tell how bow-legged this child is until probably they start walking. Mm. And you'll find most of, when babies start walking, they have a f very funny gait. <laughs> <laughs> mm. It's yeah. very funny. Yeah. And sometimes you'll probably see that, oh, they look a bit bow-legged and all that. But you just, you let them learn. Mm. It's when it is too persistent, like past the ages of three, three years over there, then uh, you'd probably need some uh, medical attention. Or even if it happens earlier, you find that maybe the child is severely bow-legged, is like two years, has not walked. Ata ukimweka, asimame haizis mama vizuri because the baby is bow-legged, yeah? So sometimes rickets can present like that. Um, and that is something that would need medical attention. Sometimes some of these things run in the families. It can be very familial. But then you find that after some time, um, actually, for those which are familial, some of them would need medical therapy. Mm. Yeah, especially if it's very severe, mm. then that one does need medical therapy. I think my sister was in the cluster for a while. Oh, okay. Yes, yeah. Ah, okay. <laughs> okay, nice one. Why do babies stretch a lot? Stretching a lot. Mm. <laughs> uh, yeah, I have a theory. Okay. Because they've been in the tummy and they were like this the whole time. I know they're, they're just exposed, so they're just like. That's a know. good one. Yeah, a, it does actually make sense. Yeah, because they were like this the whole time. Yeah, and yeah. then even even for us as normal human beings, like when you find yourself stretching, it's because probably you've been in one in position. You know, a yeah, time. position, and you need to kinda yeah. Yeah. relieve the tension from your muscles. So yeah. they would also do that. Uh, you're very correct. Actually, and that's why like you're encouraged to massage. Yes. Not okay. Not when they are born, but yeah, uh, maybe a bit later, like two weeks. That's just okay. Massaging. Mm. Yeah, I used to do like. I used to stretch in like this, like this. Until you take to your mother or your grandmother. Until you take now for the session. Mm -hmm. Now my sister used to come for those sessions mm -hmm. where now. Eh? <laughs> yeah, and then they lake you and sleep until tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, I think that's, that's my reason. Okay. Um, tied to this, I would ask about the, why do they get the moral reflex? Like, what's that about? Okay, uh, so moral reflex is one of the many reflexes. Or what we call primitive reflexes. Mm. So these are reflexes the baby is born with, like they don't learn them. Mm. And some of them are there for survival. Mm. So the moral reflex, or even how some mothers would describe my baby startles, startles you know? Yeah. So that is them responding to the environment. It's really like if it's a new environment, they are becoming alert mm. to, do I need, let me call it the fight or flight system oh. they're becoming alert to it so that's why they would startle okay yeah okay i would say also like uh, when you go through like good sleep habits with a newborn because mm -hmm. of that reflex and it keeps like waking them up you are advised to swaddle the baby okay so that they can get used to, they can sleep well because they were in a, a very cozy place so swaddling mm -hmm. is almost like Mimicking mommy's tummy mm. keeps them warm and together, mm -hmm. so that way they're sleeping longer mm. than when you let your li your newborn like lose oh, lose okay. her. Yeah, so the first four months you're really advised to swaddle, and my sister used to come to swaddle my son, and those nights he'd sleep so well. Mm -hmm. You just use a shawl or swaddling thing, and then yeah. there's a way you just wrap them and they feel cozy like they were. Yeah, yeah, because that reflects they can Yeah, answer. it's true. It's very true. Yeah, mm. taught you something. <laughs> I'm always open to learning <laughs> every day, every day. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So why do babies lick their hands? Lick their hands. <laughs> <laughs> what is happening? <laughs> lick their hands. Do please, they? Please I don't help know. me understand. I... Okay. <laughs> how, yeah, maybe I'll mimic, but how best I will interpret that question is um, 
okay so we're not expecting it to be a normal thing mm. i guess but there is a certain stage uh, in the infancy whereby babies use their mouth a lot for exploration yeah. which is normal yeah. it's only when it persists beyond that time mm. yeah then it becomes an issue because you know they're exploring their environment before mm. now they're able to use their hands properly and uh, coordinate everything uh, well for themselves so they will use their mouth a lot for exploration mm. so could it be um, are we talking about the licking of their hands around that stage when they're licking everything mm. or exploring with everything and even teething sometimes yeah. makes them use their mouth yeah. for everything cuz um, yeah. yeah exactly yeah. related to that one, now that you mentioned it there's a question on why can a baby not have like teeth are there babies who never get teeth um it's sasa unakuwa umetengol i believe no. never say never Okay. Uh, in our world you never say never. You can't give things. Ah, yeah. <laughs> you never say never. Yeah. So that I believe can happen. Dentists are better uh, placed for this, but from what I know is th- it can happen and it is not normal. Okay. Yes. Because so they are deficiency in something. Uh there are diseases that you need to look into like why is this person not developing the teeth because the teeth are very important we may just look at them as you know they're for beauty and all that but if you've had your molars premolars removed try and chew meat with your front teeth you will understand why you, you have those teeth you need all of them <laughs> yeah it helps form the structure of your face yeah. it helps you do all these movements it helps you eat properly So the teeth are very important and it even just you know protects the back structures your tongue whatever it is that is going numa because you've seen like uh, maybe the older the older generation the older people when they don't have the teeth and you know making talking is also a bit difficult so the teeth also help us talk and articulate yeah so it is important to have teeth when you don't have teeth that needs to be sorted out okay yeah so uh, we are almost done um, why do some babies refuse to eat at all at all okay so refusing to eat at all um every baby is different yeah. and when they are refusing to eat number one, we need to know at what stage are they at are they at the weaning period are they at the tantrum phase what stage are they at because during the weaning period you're introducing something new. new so they might fight it they might fight it and even if they fight it you don't give up on the first or second try yeah. keep trying because the acceptance rate is more likely when you try it a bit more maybe mm. like you might find they're taking it by the eighth time mm. but now when you give up at the second point then you you, you limit it. you yeah. and then you limit your baby's choices which means now they they are at risk of being Uh, malnourished mm-hmm. yeah so that is one stage at which they can refuse to eat mm. the other point they can refuse to eat is uh during the tantrums phase and sometimes when tantrums begin as early as nine months wow there was someone who asked that they can begin as early as nine months mm. so why do they eat tantrum just generally generally so uh, the proposed uh, theory for it is they are trying to express themselves oh, yeah. but it is not adequate enough to express themselves so what other method can i use to get attention or explain i'm trying to tell you i am full mm. i want this but you're not paying attention you get mad exactly so they just communicate so yeah one of the reasons they have the tantrums is that frustration that they they can't talk properly so yeah. it becomes i want this but i don't know exactly how to tell you yeah. about it okay. yeah sometimes they also want your attention and then um they can use the tantrums because di- there's a different way supposed to respond to them you know you as the parent don't get angry mm. uh, acknowledge what it is that they are looking for yeah. and then again you sh- there are those who advise ignore the tantrum and the baby falls back into line you know <laughs> and, but then again if you keep giving in to these tantrums and all that then it now becomes a manipulation sort yeah, of game so it's something you need to be very careful about mm. but that's another another baby can find out find you know what i will not eat mm. and there there are some moms will be like it's okay when you're hungry i'm telling you that hunger reflex <laughs> they eat <laughs> that hunger reflex <laughs> will drive that child to go yeah. look for food yeah yes. another reason they can refuse to eat is because they're sick that one is also very yeah. important yeah uh 
because when, especially when they're sick, um, that means that their body is, uh, actually what happens when you're sick, your energy requirements go high because mm -hmm. apart from doing the normal growth process and all that, your body is now fighting an infection. Mm -hmm. So it needs more energy for that. That means your intake, the calories and all that would be probably higher. Mm -hmm. And now if you're not eating, then you're more likely to lose more weight and all Maybe, that and yeah. then it definitely. Mm. So those are some of the reasons why this baby is not eating. There are other babies who it's a specific food that they cannot tolerate, like milk products, let's say, because they eat it and they either get very bad constipation or terrible gas, you know, something just happens. Yeah, yeah, and because of that, they develop food aversion to it. Oh. So why a baby would not eat completely, they would probably need to be qualified a bit more, mm. but generally that's how I would answer it. When the baby's crying, it's around him. So uh, that would be their response. They are not able to communicate mm. uh, verbally. Uh, they're in a new surrounding. They're wondering, who is this? Where am I? what's going on and all that. So it's their response. Yeah, there are some people or even some babies who when you put them in a new environment, they will keep quiet fast and watch. Mm. Before even doing it, they just watch, you know, trying to familiarize themselves with it. Mm. So sometimes, when if, especially if they don't feel safe mm. around that new environment, then they'll cry. They're communicating, excuse me, I feel lost or I don't feel safe around here. Come and sort me out. The last question I got is, why is my baby moving with his butt? <laughs> wow. <laughs> Interesting one. <laughs> uh, hmm. So, when babies are, are mm -hmm. learning how to move around, uh, they, they, are, they have various styles. Yeah. There are those who will move around with the butt. And I think I've seen some videos where it's like, it's, it's so professionally done. <laughs> <laughs> One expert in it. Then there are those who will, you know, crawl backwards. Mm. There are those who will just stand up and walk mm. without even having to go through the crawling phase. So moving in the butt can be a phase. Mm. Uh, around that time when they're learning how to walk, like what, nine months, ten months, or even probably earlier. Mm. But when you find a two-year-old moving with the butt, um, I think that is something that would warrant medical attention, especially if they're not able to move yeah uh, or even stand or walk but in in essence they're just trying to propel themselves forward and they're using their butt then at that point i would be worried okay. yeah final final question why do <laughs> babies uh why do newborns wake up a lot okay uh so waking up a lot uh first of all one thing i'd like to let us know mm. the study and science of sleep is the whole <laughs> 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 It's a lot. It's a lot. Yeah. And sleep is a gift from God. <laughs> My personal belief, it is a gift from God. And even up to now, there's still a lot about sleep. We don't know. There are literally academies of sleep that sleep exist. Sleep academies. They yes. exist. Yeah, I've been to one. And <laughs> if I am learning a lot on a daily basis about sleep. Okay. So when we talk about babies waking up a lot mm -hmm. at night, um, so there's something called the circadian rhythm, which controls your sleep-wake cycle, mm. yeah? Uh, which lets you know it's evening, it's time for you to sleep, versus it's daytime, it's time for you to be awake, up and about. So for babies, that rhythm of theirs is still yet to develop properly and, you know, distinguish night and day, day and night. So it's for them, it's like they don't have rules, like... Sleep time is whenever I want. Wake up time is whenever I want. Mm. Before their body settles into a, a sleep-wake routine, that, that's, that's what happens. Yeah. Mm. Also, when it comes to newborns, so they need to eat. Yes, they also need to eat yeah. a lot. It's yeah. like after yeah, every two, three eating. hours. Yeah. I, I remember like uh, when, when we're discharging mothers uh, and they're going home, mm. the first few days we tell them, uh, make sure you breastfeed your babies every every, every Should you really wake three them? hours Should and you all really that. Wake them up? We had that debate in a baby shower on Saturday at home. Would I wake the baby up to breastfeed every three hours? No. Uh huh. Yeah, I'm sleeping. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sleeping. But can you say the importance of doing it? So why do we say um, 
it's important to, for them to feed after every three yeah, hours or so. Yeah. Remember, I've talked a lot about their energy requirements at this particular point in life because the most amount of growth anyone makes in their lifespan is within the first, first year, year of life. Yeah. And then out in that first year of life, the first six months, you're only taking breast milk. Mm. Yeah? Okay. Uh, or as is ad advised, it would be breast milk or even, even if you're doing the formula, supplementation, whatever it is. But whatever it is you're taking is milk alone. So for this to be done every so often, for the baby to grow, then it is important, especially maybe the first first month, second or so. Mm. Then now as the circadian rhythm starts to develop, you find that most of these babies sleep for more hours um, yeah. in 24 hours, like even up to 16 hours per day or even more, you know? In yeah, total. In total. Mm. But now you see how that is distributed. They, they'll probably have longer hours asleep at night than during the day. So during the day, it's broken into like naps in between playtime naps then night they can even go even up to 10 hours for sleep mm -hmm. so initially you'll do the feeding then they will show you what uh, they are comfortable with mm -hmm. as their sleep patterns develop mm -hmm. then now with that you're able to try and synchronize yeah the feeding versus this and then there are babies who Probably the mom will take them in the middle of the night when they are not really awake, but they can still circle. For like dream feeding. Yeah. yeah. Which is also important. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Mm. Okay. I think I'll also get a sleep trainer like to go into the science of a dream sleep because I have personally learned a lot. Yeah. Th that, that is one my session. Notes with you. I have notes like from my master class. Well, that's really nice. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, I feel like you've answered most questions asked, but we Google. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I've learned a lot. Thank you for honoring this call to answer. Um, I hope you enjoyed. I as did. Well. <laughs> Filming I did. This. I have laughed. Yeah. I have recalled <laughs> knowledge yeah. from back then. Yeah, and I've also learned. Yeah. Like you know, some questions that would seem so obvious or something to you. It's <laughs> someone wants an explanation and then now to be able to put it in simple terms. Yeah. Which is also a, a learning process for me and it's it's very humbling by yeah, the way. Yeah. Yeah, it is. yeah. Guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you for submitting your questions. And until next time, please suggest any other video you'd like her featured because I like her here. Next until next time, make sure you subscribe, comment and like my content. Bye bye. Bye bye.